Morning, Jason. Um, would you be cold if you didn't have the heater on? No, I wouldn't actually. It's quite warm. It's warm up now. It's warm outside now. Uh, Jason has been wiring Ben and Zach's loom. Goes. A little while ago, actually, I got the phone call from, I think, two of the most excited Australians I've ever talked to. Um, it was it was like a co comedy show almost. They were talking over each other. They were trying to finish each other's sentences. They were, they were like a couple of little schoolboys. They were so excited about this Hilux they purchased and a surf and which one to use and what engines. And they were so excited to talk to me. Um, and through several reincarnations and changing of the plan while we were making the plan, we've come up with a plan. And at this point, um, Ben and Zach have to stick to the plan because it's too late we've made the loop. Uh, now, Zach is the mechanic and Ben owns the truck. And what are we going with? I talked to Zach the other day and I said, maybe at any time, could this possibly, maybe, if there's a tiny chance of it, be supercharged? And which way are you putting the intake manifold on? And he said, yes, it might be. And he didn't know which way the manifold was going on, the intake manifold. Because it is, I think it's presently flipped. It's at that side of the prison? So Jason has had to wire for that, which he's done. So he's made it like our supercharger looms, where the idle speed control unit and the throttle position sensor and the air temp is actually branched at the back of the engine. So it's branched over here. So you'll see here's, this looks like an idle speed. Mm -hmm. It goes up the side. And this looks like an air temp, so it can go either side. And the throttle position is that one. So it can go a few different places. So we've covered all the options. We're going to put, we're going to send over um, some knock sensors for under the intake manifold, some Bosch ones with the little studs. And we've put a little five pin, oh no, it's a six pin, I can't count. Plug for the. Six pin is, they do a five pin D team. Like, I know, they wish they should though, shouldn't they? They should do a five. should do like one of each, all the way up. Yeah. Um, and then, so we put that in for the transmission or the gearbox wiring, manual gearbox. Normal, it's um, 1.2 long from about that point. Uh, it's got some, it's got some coil on plugs. Uh, this is an early one, so it'll either get these ones or it'll get the three Z ones. Our setup comes with an idle speed control unit. And what map sensor did you you put a 1.15 mounted intake manifold mounted? 1.15 link plug on it. So if he puts a different map sensor, then you put a little adapter loom or you run a link one. You just get the three bar one. Link one if you supercharger on. Yeah, get the three bar. So, so often we are supplying the link, link ECU as well, but in this case, he's done a deal with a mate somewhere and he's got a, and it seems to be a current, I think it's a G4X. Um, I don't actually have a G4X for testing, so we're gonna test it on a G4 Plus. And then Zach can smash some what numbers into the ECU and set it up. Um, and I'll put the tricky question, eh? We'll, uh, we'll put some questions to make sure that they've actually watched the video. So they can tell us which map sensor they're going to use. Or when, and whether we're supplying it or they're supplying it. I don't actually know. They'll have to watch the video to answer the question and then I'll know they've watched the video. Good plan, eh? Good plan. And Zach's actually got used to me hassling him for being Australian. Uh, I'm actually pretty confident. He's actually exhibited enough uh, knowledge over the phone that I'm pretty confident he's going to get this one sorted. Uh, now, the Fury. Tell us about the Fury. What's one of the... You like the Furies, eh? I do. I put on four cylinders. Six cylinders. They work really well. We don't know how six cylinders work, those inline things? No, no, no. They work really well. <laughs> oh, actually, that's what Andrew Datsun's got, perfect. I like them four cylinders as well. So, the great thing about the Fury is it's got an inbuilt um, wideband sensor. 
one wide band sensor. Uh, so Jason has done a bit of a planning here. Did you push? You didn't push the little clip across. Oh, that is across. I always forget, eh? That's the one I forget. So he's made it about about 500, so it can get a short sensor down to that bank, that one there, or a short sensor down to that bank, or even better, it can get a long sensor like an 800, which we can supply, and it can go back in the merge. I'll need to let us know if we're supplying pressure sensors with adapters. Uh, so that is the fuel pressure, fuel temp. I haven't got a loom, I haven't, I'll have to make a loom for you. Yeah. We don't have one sitting around, so no. uh, we're doing too many. Now, there's a little loom down here, which will be for the oil pressure. And there will be an AC wire in that as well, running up just to run the pump. Oh. Make this, you want to make this run? Yeah, I want to make this run. You, you're catching on. So it's finished in RNF 100 Raychem. There's enough length in the injectors if they decide to change injectors. Though, you know what, I'd, I'd be putting a set of um, 360cc injectors in it now and tuning it NA with the 360s myself, which I can supply. 360s or four or the... Nah, I'd go with the 360s ones. Same as I put in the Zephyr. Should, should we check the oil in the um, old yellow? It's yeah. not even showing on the dipstick. Maybe along the dipstick. I've got them too. <laughs> Uh, so this is the, the Bluetooth dipstick. It's old yellow. Well, I hope it had oil in it because I fired it up yesterday. It doesn't have oil pressure anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So over here, standard relay box. We have fan. We have a fuel pump. We have ignition in. And we have starter motor. Starter input. We have a body plug. Dash plug. With oil pressures and oil temps and auxiliary outputs and air conditioning input and output taco all the things that uh, zach may want to wire up of course we have a oil oil a water temperature sensor right there and if you want to run just an oil light either it can be triggered off the ecu or it can come off that plug directly i'll keep my fingers away eh? Fan relay. Hey, fan relay missing. Crank sensor. Oh. Cam sensor. Left hand side. Oh. We will be sending the idle speed control with it. Yeah. Got a problem? Fuel hot. Yeah, we need fuel hot. And is there fuel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, bucket of noise has got fuel in it. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Is this one long enough if he wants to take it through here? It'll go down? They normally are. Mm -hmm normally when you wire them so this is the factory spot but it is possible if you want to bring them through here zip tie them cut some covers and drop them down um, maybe maybe we can plug it oh, yeah. yeah it reaches fine it, all the other ones you've done have been able to do that that gets stuff away from here especially if you're supercharging so i actually like on when you're doing this way and you've been doing them perfect to do it that way Tucks them out of the way a little bit more. And then you tuck all that in there. That looks nice. The tune on this is the base map of the Link software. So it doesn't run very well. We just have to know it all runs and does some stuff right. Because I don't have an, a G4X well, I Fury. I couldn't want a, a base map for a tune. Oh, okay. What are your things? So I use the VBTI. Yep. Just... Made it work. That's the way. So, so, the throttle input to it so what Chase is talking about is he um, just made it up, which is fine for the situation. We want to fire it, run it, and then it will need to be tuned anyway over in Australia. And computers are not really matter. And he's using a different computer. I've got lots of the old G4 Plus tunes Maybe for different setups. 2J tune? I don't think 2J tune will work. Although in saying that, we probably should explain that the Fury's got eight injectors. So it's got sequential injection and six ignition. So it's grouped fire for the coil. So they're wired 
as a wasted spark effectively. But a great choice. I actually had, um, well, I actually had someone ring up or talk to me this week about putting a monsoon on a BBTI. And they couldn't find where I've done that. And I'm like, well, I don't normally do that because it's not enough ECU. But it can be done with a normal throttle body. Hmm. Are you going to make noise? Am I doing the throttle? Am I getting some earmuffs? Or is it going to be loud? Can I get some earmuffs? Wait, I'll just tuck the wide band away from the hot stuff and the purning stuff and the... We'll um, mount the wide band in the manifold. Plenum, plenum mounted wide band. Sure. Ready? Yeah, I'm good. You got a fuel pump going? Is it Bluetooth fuel pump? We got the Bluetooth dip stick. That'll be better, eh? Yeah, the ignition wire fell off. The <laughs> ignition wire, that'll do it. Oh, it might be a little bit lean there at the moment. Yep, had a go. It's not bad at all, eh? <laughs> well, I'm just checking out. Actually, got things happening. Um, I think you did well. We'll get a um, an oil pressure plug for it. The knock sensor plugs there. We've got the knock sensors, and Zach and Ben will let us know about those. Uh, fuel pressure. If he wants a fuel pressure sensor and or with an adapter or sometimes we just tap it with a 10 by 1 thread directly into the fuel rail uh, what else does he need to know i think that's everything eh? zach's watched lots of lots of videos so he'll probably almost be able to know what's oh, yeah. going on those uh you got a little picture for him yeah draw a picture draw those yeah those yeah no it's a dashboard <laughs> Those are etc. auxiliaries and oh, yes. DIs. Yep. And can you just um, can you just tell them about this little plug? Oh. So if you want fuel temp, this wire, swap wire around. And it yep. goes to it goes from fuel temp to what's it on at the moment? That's on fuel. That's on fuel temp. Yeah. So. You know, otherwise, there's an empty, There's another two from plug at the back there. There's a semi there. That's it. See so, so this one here, this little plug at the back is um, another input. So it's an um, this is a ambient air temperature if it ever gets supercharged. Okay, so we would normally run a, an inlet air temp under the supercharger and an ambient. This one's more of an ambient at the moment. We, we call it the inlet, but it's actually measuring the air entering into the throttle body. But when there's a supercharger, we measure it after the supercharger, which is what this one's for. Though we could have put it on an auxiliary and put a... It could be changed and... We... By doing this, we often do this when we don't have enough auxiliary... No, analog inputs. We could have wired this one with a pull-up resistor if we wanted. But this is for a down the track, maybe it could be, possibly it's going to get supercharged. Um, so that can be addressed at that time. But the wire's actually already in the wiring loom to run that sensor if required. Oh, yeah. there's two earths in front of the head for the calls. Oh, absolutely. Earth there. Which, um, that's um, not very tight. No, no, none of the earths are tight. Runs pretty good with loose earths. We try not to do that, eh? Oh, that one's much tighter. That one's, this one, the, it feels like the bolt was just about bottomed out. And there's two earths, or one earth at the back here. That one's nice and tight. These coils actually don't need a lot of earths and a lot of power, eh? And they actually draw a lot. No. I actually wired one up with 22 gauge the other day, and they work fine. Well, yeah. 22 is actually, if you do the specs on it, they're actually fine. 
individually. Well, they had a big power feed, but then... Uh, yep, yeah. to the coils, fine. They're not actually going to run more main, than five amps. The main power while it was bigger than yeah. two, but... Now someone actually talked to me about the flex plate flexing and painting with um, primer or undercoat to stop it making that noise. Yeah. Mm, I'm not sure. I probably should get a disc made for it so it doesn't vibrate. Right, we've rambled enough. Right, uh, Zach and Ben, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, let me know on the extra bits that you want. Any questions, let us know. I also need to know if uh, you guys want an air temp sensor, which is normally included anyway, so I'm probably just gonna put it in the box. Um, now we're gonna just have a quick chat about the tunes. I endeavor to supply a set of numbers for the ECU that I'm supplying. However, people do sometimes use ECUs outside of our normal bounds, that, or the G4X I haven't developed a whole heap of tunes for yet. I've got a few, I've got some numbers. So we will supply a set of pinouts for this setup normally. And um, I will allow Zach to have access to my special link folder for a period of time so he can assemble a suitable tune. It's gonna go to the dyno and be set up there, but a good set of numbers to make the engine start and run. They all should be tuned. Um, if, if I am supplying the ECU, we will supply the ECU as it's come off our engine that starts and runs and works. If you've had your ECU, purchased your ECU somewhere else and had your loom made somewhere else, then I'm going to charge for the tuning help and setting up help. Um, and I've just been sorting another person's problem out and the builder of that loom didn't supply the map sensor. And the, um, the documentation was interesting. So I actually, that's why I try to do a video of most of the looms that we send out. And... Yeah, you probably should have put the 2J tune back on, just played a note with it. Um, and whenever I'm looking at other jobs and other jobs that people have done and the problems I'm solving, it endeavours for me to try and make it better. Um, Brian, over in the USA, I seen him in a Haltech loom recently. Um, I didn't actually have the Haltech pin out for the, so from the body plug to the relays. He didn't get relays and fuses, which I don't normally do. I sent him a photo of it, we had a bit of a chat, and he wired and put it together. So I do expect the people who are fitting these to have some level of competence with setting up wiring and aftermarket computers, okay? And generally, I've got to know the person and I kind of know what information they will need. And it's a little bit customized for every single job. And it will continue to be that way with the nature of the work we do. Jason's gonna pop it off this engine and he's gonna wire a Haltech for Australia next. Do it to you soon. Catch you later.